we're going to do a little research project here. So let's begin with the idea. In London, the knowledge is something that taxi drivers must pass in order to obtain their license. And basically it means they have to memorise the streets within a six mile radius of Charing Cross in the centre of London. So we're going to use this to calculate what that area looks like and also we're going to see if we can calculate the population within that area. There's various ways you could do this but here's how I'm going to handle it. The first thing I'm going to do is obviously make sure I've got QGIS open. And then I'm going to go to the browser tab and expand XYZ tiles. If you don't see the browser tab, just remember, go to view, panels, and turn the browser panel on. In XYZ tiles, I'll expand that. I've added a number of other ones, but I'm going to add OpenStreetMap here. Now I'm going to zoom into London, and I need to find the spot that is at the centre of London for measurement purposes. And for taxi drivers, it's Charing Cross, and it's specifically the statue of Charles the First. So what we need to do is create a point here, and I don't really need it to be a permanent point. So I don't need to save it as a shape file or a geo package. I can use this little button, which what that will do is it's going to create a temporary layer, and I click that button. What I need to do here though is I'm going to use a six mile radius. So I just need to be careful here. So let's call this one statue. That's a layer name. The geometry type is going to be a point. In this section, I'm going to make sure that I can do a radius of a fixed distance. So WGS84, which might be the default, that's going to be in degrees. I want to choose British National Grid here because it's a projection or a coordinate reference system in meters. If you don't see it there, you can click this little button to select CRS and then if I just type in British up here, you'll see it listed here if you've recently used it, but if you haven't used it before, you'll find it in the lower section. And I can click OK. The new field section, you don't need to worry about that in this case, but what that does is if you wanted to add different columns into your attribute table for this layer, you could do that there, but we don't need that right now. All we need to do is make sure it's a point and that it's British National Grid and we can click OK. It's going to then create a blank layer over on the left in the Layers panel. There's no geometry associated with this, so we need to create a point, and we do that by clicking on this button, Add Point Feature, and then I'm going to click a point on the statue. So there we've got our point. That's where the six mile radius starts from. So I can turn off editing by clicking the pencil button, and I'll hit Save. And now if I turn off OpenStreetMap, we can see a point. So that is the point where we want to measure from. Now, if I just wanted to visualize what this six mile radius looks like, I could do that fairly easily. I could create a buffer or I could use a little geometry generator trick. So let's start with geometry generator. I'm gonna double click on statue to open the properties for the layer. If you see a box like this, just click okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the size of the point, first of all, just so it's easier to see. Let's make it yellow, let's make it red, and let's make it have a white outline, and let's make the outline thicker. So we've got our point at Charing Cross. If I want to add a six mile ring around this, I can click the plus button to add another symbol layer. And we see another one called Simple Marker. We want to change the type here. So in symbol layer type for the one we just added, I'm going to change that to geometry generator. It's a little bit confusing if you've never used this before, but it's pretty straightforward if you follow along. So the geometry type of this is going to be a polygon. So you need to change that. If you don't change it, it'll still work, but the circle will be either all points or just a line. I want mine to be a polygon. So I'll choose that. You can just type in directly into this box if you know what you're doing, but it's probably easier to click the little expression button. So I'll click that. And a little tip here just to make it easier is the cursor will be flashing after geometry. So just put it at the start before the dollar sign. In the search box, let's type in buffer. 
and you see the different functions that I've got buffer in the name and also if you've if you've recently used some of these it'll be listed there but the one we want to use is called buffer so I can double click it and then we just need to fill in some other numbers so the buffer is going to go around the existing geometry which is the dot I put a comma in and now we need to put in the distance well I said six miles and our data set is in meters so let's google that and we discover that's 1609.34 meters in a mile so that's going to be our buffer size but of course we want six miles now we could do a calculation in a calculator and add in the number but qgis is quite smart so i just i'm going to do this put it in brackets and times it by six the reason I would do that rather than putting the exact number is because if I want to go back and change it to five miles, I don't need to recalculate the numbers. I can just type in times five or times eight or times four. Uh, QGIS will calculate that for us. So that's the buffer distance in its radius. I'll put in another comma. And the last thing we have to put in is segment. Segments essentially relates to how smooth your buffer circle will be. I'm going to use 500. 500 often works well. If you use like zero, for example, or, or even if you don't put it in, you might get a very blocky looking buffer. So that's all good. I'll click OK. The only thing I'm going to do now is I don't want the fill color for this buffer to be completely filled in because I want to be able to see through it. So let's click on the color patch and just drag the opacity slider down a bit and let's make it maybe yellowish. Click OK. Now if I apply that, you can see what happens. It colours it in. If I zoom out, there we have our six mile area for the knowledge. So London taxi drivers have to memorise all these streets. But let's say we want to actually create a permanent layer for the buffer. Well, we could click on the toolbox button to open the processing toolbox. You can also access what I'm about to do via the vector menu, but that requires you to remember where things are. I always like to use the processing toolbox. I'm gonna to type in buffer here and under vector geometry, we see buffer so we can double click it. So I'm gonna buffer the statue layer, that's the point layer. I'm gonna do it by six miles. And always make sure you double check the units before you run it. Segments, I'll do the same, 600. And in this case, further down where it says buffered create temporary layer. If I wanted to save that to a geo package or to any type of file like um, shapefile or whatever, I could click on that button. For now, I'm not going to do that because this is just for demonstration. If you want to save your results to a new layer though, make sure you do that here. Now I'm going to run this and I'll close that and I'll zoom to the layer. So now what we have is an entirely new layer, which represents a six mile radius. I'm just going to change it to a transparent fill and a colored boundary. And one thing we can do here is actually, that's quite useful is instead of choosing a simple fill, if I go to inverted polygons, we can fill in everything outside the circle because that's what an inverted polygon does. Usual fill, which is single symbol, will colour in the area, but an inverted polygon will colour in everything outside the area. So let's leave the stroke colour as transparent. Let's use the fill colour. Let's use black. And I'll click the colour patch again and change the opacity to 35%. Click apply. Okay. So now we've got a map, a kind of spotlight map showing the area covered by the knowledge. Let's turn on the point layer again and let's just, we'll keep the geometry generator symbology but we'll just turn it to transparent for now. Okay we've got a central point and we've got our six mile radius. Now we might want to know the population living within that area so we need some data. So there's a couple of options here and the links for this are in the description for the video. But let's look at them. From WorldPop, we can grab a raster data set, in this case, a roughly 100 meter resolution. 
So this is open data freely available for pretty much every country. I'm going to click on download entire data set. I'll download that while I've still paused the video and I'll come back to that in a minute. But I'm going to download that TIFF file. I've also created myself a small area population data set. It's a couple of years older now, but the population data has not changed much. So we're going to use that too. And like I said, the links to these are in the description. So I'll just grab these whilst to pause the video and then we'll add them in. Okay, I've downloaded the files and you can see them in my folder that I've created. You can add these in different ways, but to be honest, if you've got them in a folder, just select them and drag and drop them into the map canvas. After that, you might just have to click add layers. Okay, so let's start with the points layer. The points you see on the map are small area population units in London, and we're going to calculate the population. There's a couple of ways we can do this. A simple way is to use a select. So let's go to vector and research tools. And what we're going to do here is, let me just move this over, vector research tools. We're going to select by location. So we want to select all the features from the small area population layer that intersect the that intersect the buffer layer. So what's happening there is we're going to select all the small points which have population data in them, all of those ones that intersect the buffered circle. If we used um, if we used are within, that would usually give us a very similar figure, but if a point is on the line itself, we probably want to include it, so that's why I've used intersect. If I hit run and then close, the points have been selected. It's hard to see there, so if I make the points bigger, you'll see that they are filled in with yellow inside that circle. So we've selected those, and now what we can do is if we go over to the right-hand side, and show statistical summary and I choose the GB small area population layer and I choose the population 2019 column at the moment what it does is it gives us a population of the whole of the UK if I take the box below which is or the whole of Great Britain actually which is about 6.65 million if I click on selected features only what we see there, and it's expressed in scientific notation, which is sometimes a bit annoying, but that's 3.24 million people in that area. So that's based on a certain size of geographical unit from the census. I would usually try and verify things using different methods. So let's try that world pop data, slightly different method there. So if I turn on the world pop data and we look at it here, We've got a raster layer and it's a little bit clunky looking. It's very small, very uh, refined, but we want to do some calculation on it. So if I go to raster and where did I put this? Let me actually search for it in here. Yeah, here we are in the processing toolbox. If I search for zonal, zonal statistics, that's not really that intuitive. You wouldn't really know that that's what you're looking for, but that's what you want when you've got a polygon and you want to analyze something from a raster data set. So I'll double click on zonal statistics. The input layer is buffered. The raster layer is going to be our GB population layer. The output column, that's going to have population data in it. Um, there's, we've just got an output column free prefix there. We can leave that as it is. I don't really want to do count sum and mean as the statistics. I only want to sum the data. So I want a sum of the population of the cells within the circle. So I'll click OK. Again, I could save this to a layer, but I'm not going to right now. It will create a new layer, a new big circle. So I'll click on Run and Close. Now, you might think, well, that's not very exciting. What's it done? But if you look at the table for the new layer, so I'll right click it and click open attribute table, you'll just see a sum, and that's a population sum, and the number there, 
18558. So that's about 3.3 .3 million. And given that it's very difficult to get any statistical geographies that exactly match a circle, this is quite encouraging. So our other data set said it was about 3.23 million. That was from 2019. This is a more slightly more recent data and it gives us about 3.3 .3 million. This is also higher resolution. So I'm going to say with a reasonable degree of confidence that the population within that area covered by the knowledge is about 3.3 .3 million, but certainly over 3 million. If I click on this button, I can dock the attribute table just to the numbers below. Now what I'm going to do is let me just apply, let me turn off the raster data set. I want to apply this style that I've got on this layer to the other layer. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to styles, copy style, all style categories, and then I'm going to right click the new zonal statistics layer, right click, styles, paste style, all style categories. And now when I turn that on, it is styled in that inverted polygon. The last thing I think here that's useful is sometimes you do this kind of analysis and you've got these temporary layers. Those temporary layers that will disappear when you turn QGIS off and will not come back, they are indicated by a little microchip icon. And if I hover over it, you can see what I mean. Temporary scratch layer only. If you've done this and decide you actually want to change your mind and save it, you can left click on that and you can choose to save it in any format. You just need to click on the little button to browse to where you want to save it to. So I would typically save this as a geo package. I'd click on here to save it. And that's how you can make it permanent. You'll also find in any of these layers with a little microchip icon, if you right click and go to export, you can export it that way or you can click make permanent. To be honest, the easiest way is a little left click on the little microchip. So we started off thinking about the knowledge of the area of London taxi drivers have to remember. We wanted to visualize it and we also wanted to calculate the population. So fairly straightforward to do a couple of different methods. I always find it useful to use different methods and different data sets to try and get some verification for what I've done. I'm fairly confident that population in reality is about 3.3 .3 million. It's a decent sized area. There's about 25,000 different street names in it. So a lot to remember. Hopefully not as much as in the not as much to remember as in this video, which has been fairly quick. So hopefully you find that useful and you'll be able to apply this kind of approach in your own work.